One thing I was just going to start with them um, with last night is not something that I'm sure you're, you've been intimately involved with in the sort of preparation of it. But what a, a great evening! The latest in the series of great evenings for for the youngsters. Yeah, I went to the game with the staff to be fair, and quite a few of the players were there. It was a uh... Yeah, terrific to go through, um, and I thought it was some really good individual and performances. And as a collective, you know, the the honesty, the work rate, the desire to compete in you know in a more pressurised occasion for them. I thought the lads coped really well with it. So you know, a huge amount of credit to the, the staff and the players and the academy as a whole, obviously, to progress through to you know the late stages. Because and as somebody's been involved in, in sort of like academies, it's all about building players to get into the first team in however many years' time. But but how big a deal are these? runs getting to these stages of, of something like the FA Youth Cup in terms of preparing players for that kind of thing? Yeah, of course, they're, they're only going to benefit you. I think in terms of, like you say, a, you know, playing at a stadium in front of a crowd with some noise, um, you know, and obviously the pressure of going through. It's such a prestigious competition, the Youth Cup, that you know, it's a bit that does get quite a bit of profile from you know, the media and on TV, etc. So, uh, you know, speaking with Brian, um, you know, it's quite clear it's obviously all about producing individuals. But again, I think, you know, sometimes having occasions like last night and playing, you know, a, a team together and, you know, keeping them together like, you know, we have done this season, I think can benefit them as well. Um, a little bit like what England did with their youth groups, right, in terms of, you know, keeping keeping them together to progress. So it was a, yeah, it was a yeah, great experience for the lads. And obviously a, a, a few of them have had a little bit of a taste of first team, whether it's training or uh, getting a, a few minutes. Is that something... Do you have to be careful when they're that much younger? At 19, 20, it's slightly different. But when you're talking about under 18s, do you have to be a little bit more wary about bringing them in to actually get them on the pitch? Yeah, it's, it's not necessarily the age. I think it's when people are ready. And I think the level of the championship is so high, um, you know, that quite often to go straight from under 18 into obviously championship football is a, a big jump up. I'm, I'm not saying it would never happen. I think in terms of... You know, ultimately, if, if players are good enough, you know, for, for me here especially, we will play them. But again, I think you know, when you, you just look at the physical demands, the psychological demands, the you know, the level of the games is you know, it's a, it's a huge step up. So um, I think you know, what, what we have definitely got is some talented individuals um, that, that perform well together as well, um, and, and they're definitely heading in the right direction. So it's good to be able to drop them in and uh, you know, see them in training, get get them up to speed with how we work, what we're looking for, and. Obviously, you know, I think I think other bits that often get overlooked is is you know just the second you step across, how you cope with that pressure. So, you know, quite often you'll you'll see their strengths last night, but then when you come across, it's about fitting in often. So, it's, you know, it's breaking down that psychological barrier sometimes of come across and be you, come across and express yourself, and and that doesn't always happen in one, two, three sessions. I think it's more, you know, the more familiar the players become uh, with coming across to our environment and being around the lads, the more they tend to express themselves. So. They're little bits that take time. And, and is that something, because obviously we see the, the players when they get on the bench for matches, but do you regularly have a lot of that squad from from last night training with the first team or is that something that happens less often? Yeah, we've seen, you know, and I didn't play last night, but Jamie's obviously one that's been been with us, F's been with us and obviously he's now out getting game time, which I think, you, you know, for me a little bit to see the benefits of that last night. Um, you know, I thought his physicality was excellent. Um, obviously Ray spent a period of time with us, so... Again, I think it's that it's that coming in and having a taste of it sometimes, um, and and really one pushing to earn the right to stay there, which Jamie has done. Jamie's been brilliant and massively developed since he's been with us. Um, and then sometimes just then dropping back down to to go and get success. So obviously, you know, I work so so closely with Brian um, that you know we're, we're constantly bringing lads across to have a look at them and train, etc. And you know, it's an important part for us going forward. So which brings us on to sort of squad bits and pieces, um, I guess, from, from the other night. Uh, a couple of, of injury issues there. Anything serious with, with Harry, for example? No, it was a little more precautionary. It was it tended to be a little bit more cramp-like than, than, than a real injury. So he, he's trained today, so you know, delighted that he's, um, he's fit. I thought he was excellent the other night. You know, his defensive side was, was exactly what we needed, so I was really pleased and, and pleased that he's available. Any other, either back or, or out from, uh, from from Tuesday night? Hopefully we've got someone back, but I'm, I'm not going to say anything. I, I, keep, I feel like I'm saying it every interview at the minute, so uh, I'm hopeful that yeah we, we might have a fresh face on, on Sunday. Which is, uh, things like that, there was such a, a lot of positives in terms of the performance on, on Tuesday, but it's still ultimately a, a loss and it makes four. So is having a fresh face, is having something like that a good way just to... to G the players up a little bit because nobody wants to go on a losing run. 
No, of course, me included. Um, you know, and that's why we work the hours we do and obsess on trying to give everything so that when the players step on the pitch, they're prepared, which, like I said the other night, you, you saw, I thought there was so much good. Um, but again, I think, you know, definitely having having an extra body or two back will definitely, you know, give everybody a bit of a lift, give everybody a boost, which, you know, sometimes needed. But at the same point, I have to say, the lads the lads can feel it. The lads know, you know, the lads, the lads are quite honest. They're reflecting on performances now, not just the outcome of games. So... You know, it's now making sure that, you know, it's not 90%, it's 100%, because when we get it right, as, as you see, I think at, at times, you know, our level's right up there. But it's, it's making sure that, you know, in, in a tough time, which, you know, if you go through the whole league, I think you could go through every team in the league pretty much that's had a, had a period where they've, you know, gone five or six without winning, um, which we, we don't want. We have to stop it. We have to make sure everything goes into Sunday to making sure that, you know, we, we hit the level we hit as a minimum the other night and, and improve on that. And, and, and come away with a result on Sunday. Over the course of a season, you, you, it's not a, a straight line. You're going to get ups and downs. You're going to get better and worse performances. But have you any insight into why they were so high and then the three below par performances came against teams that were below you in the table and then you go back up again when you, you play in one of the, the better teams in the division? Uh, numerous bits. I definitely think there's a, a psychological aspect to it. It's something that's, like I said, it's... Been there the whole season, I think, in terms of not not just since we came in. If you if you look at the the you know pre as well, I think um, yeah, for, for, for me it's I don't want to sit and talk too much around the spots and maybe's. I think it's where we do our work to understand why, and I think there's a combination. Some of it, some of it's the the psych element, the behaviour side of it, and some of it's just you know QPR for me was more tactical understanding, which as I'd said we haven't obviously spent a huge amount of time on, and then. Um, you know, someone like a Twiney we brought in to obviously, you know, help us in when we're playing against the block because of the, the profile of player and obviously not having, you know, profiles available that might suit, you know, certain styles of games brought challenges, but the, the lads are all in. I think that's the biggest bit for me. They're, they're only going to continue to improve because of how they are every day. You know, sat down individually with everybody yesterday and today to, to you know, go through certain aspects, you know, make sure that we get the little bits right because that's the, that's the big thing for me. If... If you get two or three little bits wrong, it leads to something that's much bigger. So, um, and that was it. That's what cost us the other night. But like I said, the, the, there were so many positive aspects. You know, annoyingly, my phone <laughs> blew up after the game the other night. You know, complimenting how good the lads were defensively. Kieran was, you know, complimentary in the office afterwards around, you know, how difficult we were to play against, etc. But you know, ultimately, we've we've got to keep believing in the way we work, uh, believing in each other, sticking tight together as a team. Um, you know, and, and then when we step on the pitch, it's you know making sure that we, we transfer all the all the conversation into actions. And you know, you've, sometimes you've got to work with with blocks of players who work with your your defence or, or whatever else. But do you find that those individual one on ones where you can actually sort of drill down into this is what we need to see more of, and and that's what you've got to work on. Is is that a big part of of getting the improvements you're looking for? Yeah, definitely. I've spoken a lot around you know taking responsibility because we you know yeah, we. We give the lads everything, um, and then then it's it's educating, it's making sure that if there's accountability, it's about then taking responsibility. And if you don't, why? Is it understanding? Is it emotions? You know that stop your focus. Under then understanding why, which is different for each player. So um, it, it was a good opportunity. Out of all the lads, the lads were great. To be fair, I think um, you know they're fully all in on, on what we're trying to do, and, and they can sense that we're moving in the right direction. So it's now making sure that, like I said, we we transfer that and we improve and, and transfer it into. You know, uh, whatever the game demands on Sunday, uh, across the whole duration, making sure we transfer it, a high level of performance in, into uh, into that game. I think you probably know what you're going to get on Sunday in terms of there's a slight change in, in managerial style, but it's very much now back to the the Swansea that you would have expected to have seen over the other, the last couple of years. Yeah, very much so. I went and watched them actually at Watford uh, Wednesday night, so I, I went and had a look. Um, and again, yeah, uh, compliments to, to Luke in terms of his philosophy, the way they play. Um, you know, they, especially first half, they had really good control of the game, so we know they'll want the ball and you know they'll, they'll try and do certain things with it to cause us problems. So it's yeah, uh, they, they definitely obviously shifted you know back in style to to what yeah they're renowned for. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate you're not going to say who because perhaps previously there's been an optimism about a player coming back and it's not quite come to fruition regards their availability. That would be fair to say, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's it's more that. I feel like each week I keep saying these two might be back and yeah. then it doesn't happen. So for me, it's more, let's see how they've responded to today. And But, but the point was going to be, is that the medical team saying they can't play or is that them saying they can't play or is that you saying they can't play? Like, What's what, what's the process? Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a collective. It's, 
I, I, I put them in when they're available and when they're fit. I think I'm not, I'm not an expert medically to sign people off, so I never, never can, never would. Obviously, I, pu I push to get them back as quick as they can, and I have to give credit to the staff. You know, quite a few of the same in terms of trying to push them back, but you also then have to work off of how the player responds. And there's obviously progressions and certain stages that players move through, and, and sometimes they have setbacks. Um, and, you know, that, that, that's for a manner of reasons, and then we obviously have to, you know, react off the back of that. So although you feel like they're close, they then might hit the next stage and it set them back a little bit, or you know, we reintegrate them and they feel something again. So it's, it's it, like I said, it's frustrating, definitely, obviously frustrating for me because I want to, you know, as many available to pick from. I want competition in the group. I want you know people that are you know, pushing to get in the starting lineup, and obviously, you know, the more injuries we have, the less I can do that. And are you training tomorrow? So it's kind of going to answer itself tomorrow. Yeah. Um, have those two individuals trained through the week? Scott and Cal, obviously. Cal hasn't. Twiney, Twi okay. well, Tw Twiney's not trained yet, but he's done bits. Okay. Um, on Tuesday, because it was kind of a different kind of reaction to the previous games, there was like uh, to the emotional reaction was quite, you know, like Anis was interviewed after the game. You could kind of, you said about the sort of state of the dressing room. Um how do you kind of work to get those players back up again? Yeah, I think, to, to be honest, I haven't. Of course, I sit with them and, and talk around certain bits with them, but I think in the group, that they are quite level, of course. There's a lot said in the change room afterwards, but it's my point, we, we, let's, let's stop talking about it after games and let's, stop, you know, of course, reflect on it, but it's, it's transfer it into actions. Um, like I said, from the previous game Cardiff into Ipswich I thought we actually turned a lot of it into actions but it's like I said it's for the whole duration um, so yeah, for, for me of course the, the players know I'm fully behind them uh, you know they, they get the support they need they get the work they get the detail and I think the, the, the shift I've seen is the players now stepping up and taking accountability and understanding that you know the only thing that's going to change it is them because you know like I said we we try to give them everything in terms of setups and throw-ins on corners and goal kicks on but the second the game starts I, I, it's very hard for me to affect things in game you know for example Pat does an incredible job with set pieces we do all the analysis you know the data video practice it it's then in game it's really difficult from the side to affect it and that's where you need people to step up take responsibility which is something that you know the, the group are developing and uh, that's what I like in terms of now they're internalizing a lot of it and going right we need to do this we need to do that so um, I've definitely seen growth in the group in that area, which is only going to you know help them progress and continue to improve in in game. When you talk about the sort of the general learning curve, um, however that may look, since you've come in from the players' perspective, I just wondered kind of what your learning curve has been like since you've you've joined the club. Like, where, what what what's sort of been new? What have you found out about yourself, the team, the club, the league? I appreciate there's probably quite a lot there, but I just wondered where, where... How long have you got? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. it would be interesting to know kind of what's where you are now to compared to when you came in. Yeah, I've definitely grown. I've definitely learned. I think um, like people talk about pressure. I put more pressure on myself than anybody. That's, that's the first thing for me. So in terms of... Because of that, I obsess on reflection. I obsess on analysis, which is a strength and a weakness. I'm fully aware of that. Um, it means I work far too many hours, but because I want to succeed, because I want to get it right, because I want the players stepping on the pitch as best prepared possible. Um, so I've learned a lot of, you know, the impact of history and culture on a club. It's obviously a, a big thing, I think, you know, and I'm talking not just long-term history, I mean short-term history as well, in terms of, you know, like the second half thing. <laughs> you know, I, th I think sometimes that self-fulfilling prophecy that you can build up by this is what we are and identifying and labelling yourself. I think sometimes, you know, having to break those down, I think, you know, becomes important. Um, yeah, it's a big. I, I don't want to just in a quick interview throw away some things. It's something that probably you know I definitely will at the end of the season spend a bit of time reflecting. I think when you're in it, it's quite difficult. I think you know when it's so full on, um, just with the sheer volume of games we obviously had in that heavy period. I think it when you're in it, it's games done onto the next one. So you don't often have time to step back and go right. What what have I learned? What have I taken from it? So I'll definitely make sure me and the staff will have a chunk of time to do that at some point. Uh, you talk about the concept of pressure. Um, obviously, the last game at Ashton Gate, there was an unpleasant, if you like, conclusion to it beyond the sort of the, the defeat with how the supporters reacted. Does that pressure, do you feel that pressure and expectation you've mentioned before? Like, how, how do you feel that and how do you kind of deal with that? 
I can't control it, so I don't try to put too much energy into it. Of course, it's not pleasant. I think you know, three games before that were. <laughs> It's, it's the opposite, so it just shows where the, probably a little bit where the world's at. I think that three games later, that's the, the kind of the reaction. So I get it, I get the frustration, I get we're in a, a business where it's about results. But again, I think if I allow myself to get caught up in that side of things, then it takes my eye off. You know, the most important thing in terms of where I focus and where I put my energy. So everything goes into the players, everything goes into the team, everything goes into, you know, making sure that when, when they step on the pitch, they're as best prepared possible. Um, and, and whether that be from a tactical point of view, whether it be from a you know psychological, physical point of view, is you now it's my job to make sure that the players step on and, and you know are clear with that. Um, and then we get it right, we get it wrong. It's then our job to coach and educate because if it goes wrong, it's why? Why does it go wrong? And then right, we have to make sure in that experience or in that position in the future, we respond differently. So that's for me where all my energy and all my attention goes to. Is there? And tell me if I'm wrong here. That, that basically we all in general, often just look at the result as the determining aspect of a game. Like that is the yes, no, good, bad, failure, success, all that kind of stuff. Do you Are you therefore almost working through that? So yeah, okay. I'm not saying, you, you know, losing a game is bad. Everyone knows that. But you don't see it as just a loss. Or do you just see it as a loss in terms of how you... No, definitely not. I think I, I, I'm quite clear in it. I try to work to the short, medium and long term. And I think I'm quite clear in, in, this, in this industry, you have to win games in the short term, um, which again is an interesting one. You know, talking to Brian about it, you could, like I said earlier in the interview, you could go through every single team in the league that went six, seven, eight games without winning. You know, Preston, Norwich, you know, there, there, there's so many sides that have done it that are in you know, good positions now. So I think it's then understanding right what, what, what level is a group capable of, which again is a, a process that you learn over time. There's something that you find out as you work with the players and you go through different experiences because, again, like you say, it's hard to know how the team copes with you know, pressure or uh, how they respond to losing multiple games until you do it. So, again, I think, that, you know, of course, we reflect and analyse on that. I think we then look at our processes, our ways of working. Are we heading in the dire right direction? Are the players learning? Are they, you know, getting better at the things that we're asking them to? Um, and then if, if not, why? Um, is that us? Is it the players? What is it? And, again, I think that's the biggest bit where it's... You know, it's tweaking, adapting and working as a collective and, and being all in on the team to make sure that, you know, what we've got, who we're working with, how we work is, is allows us to be effective in game to win games at the level. And then, and then beyond that, I think, yeah, we, we, we try to work with players, not just off the reaction of a game at a weekend. I think, you know, certain, certain players, well, all players will need certain things to learn and to get better at, irrespective of how they do it on a Saturday. So we kind of have the two threads, the reactionary stuff on a Saturday, but then also the, the medium, longer term stuff as well. So with the reactionary thing as well, um, how, how, how significant is the league table to you? Because when, the, the, when, when things were good, if all were positive in terms of results, post Southampton, you were asked questions about playoffs and this kind of thing, which you very understandably flat batted away. But obviously when it's the opposite, almost as if the league table doesn't matter yet, but when things are not so good in terms of results, is that still the same sort of line of thinking or are you conscious of that? The position, yeah. No, th the process for me is always about winning the next game. I think that that if I if I look at league tables too much, I'm not sure what it's gonna what it's gonna give me. I think it's like I say, whether we're three points off playoffs or whether we're on a run of you know a few losses. I think it's the same thing. I think it's make it you know just because we've lost three doesn't mean I'm gonna force or are gonna change what we do in the next game. Is what do we have to do to win? And I think that's the thing for me. If if we get that right, then the league table will will be an outcome. And I think. Yeah, to, to yeah. understand there's so much effort uh, and energy that goes into outcomes that actually you can overlook the most important bit, which is the, the process, the actions, the behaviours that get you that. Um, you know, scoring a goal is a great example. You know, play with, you know, Tommy and Naki will go into the game wanting to score a goal, and if they focus on that, you might actually forget the most important bit, which is getting the right positions to score goals, get your touch right so you can get the shot off, then execute the shot. I think that's for me. I, if you get the process and the action right, you'll, you'll get the outcome that you hopefully want. Um, and it's not always going to be the case, as you, as you see with everybody. So I think it's, you know, that, that for me is always where the energy will go. Thanks for bringing up Tommy and Naki, because that was going to be a nice question. You got, you in on a few here, obviously, right? Tommy was scored on yep. Tuesday, coming off the bench, to show you that perhaps he should have started. <laughs> as they do, as strikers do. Or I got it right. Yeah, or you got it right, of course. <laughs> Naki obviously played very well as well, I thought. Yeah. Maybe one of his best games of the season, I thought, in terms of his overall cont contribution, kind of the uh, sort of the subtle things he did. Are we still one or the other, 
or are you kind of is there still a, or is there a possibility for both of them playing from the start? You know, there's definitely a possibility for, for both of them. I think it. I'd be totally honest. I've got a rough idea for a team at the weekend. I haven't picked it yet. It's something I, I'll do this afternoon and sleep on tonight, and then finalise it first thing tomorrow morning. But yeah, I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't rule out them playing together. I think, um, like I said, it's. I actually thought that the two of them. I thought Tommy. Tommy, to be fair, had a, a little bit of a dip, but I actually thought he was excellent the other night, and he, he trained really well on. I think it was Monday, so and trained well the last couple of days. So he's definitely. Um, yeah, as we're young players, he's in a really good spot at the minute. I think you've got to keep pushing him. And at the same point, I'd, I'd had the chat with Naki where I was conscious Naki had been in and out, in and out, in and out, which you know sometimes it's quite difficult to get rhythm as well. So to be fair, I'd given Tommy a, f a run of games at some point. It was almost to be fair to Naki to go, right, you're, you're going to get a few games to see how you do. And I'm in agreement with you. I thought he did really well the other night. Uh, just on Cam, because you mentioned before the game on Tuesday that he's got a little bit of a niggle still going on that he's kind of having to manage. Um, is that going to affect him at all? given it's two games in a week or is he going to be okay for the weekend? Yeah, no, it's nothing major. It's, it's a tiny little thing that um, it's just about managing it and, and getting through to the end of the season with it. So, yeah, it's, it's not it's not something where he's a, he's a doubt because of it. It's just something that's just ongoing. Like, you know, J-Mo, the, the bits he had when he was playing with his Achilles, bring it, bring he's got a little something that's nothing major that he can manage and, and be fine with.